Let's discuss method for calculating financial risk. So risk matrix, this is commercial. And then it's econometric modeling, or we can use quantile or quantile regression, or you can use extreme value theory. It's a traditional uh, peak over threshold. And then we can use serially correlated, which is extreme index demonstration. Okay. To illustrate various methods for assessing financial risk, we can consider the daily log return of IBM stock from January 2nd, 2001 to December 31st, 2010 for 2,515 observations. See figure 4 and we have a long position of 1 million of the stock and the loss is this one. So, this is a log return, okay, log return, figure 4, and then, yeah, the long position 1, so loss is simply minus. In the risk matrix, the company, the risk matrix company, to use so let XT denotes a daily loss, so it's a minus of the return, multiplied by original position possibly. Risk matrix assumes that XT conditional on previous information, current information is distributed normal distribution and then I garch basically sigma t follows this I garch okay follows simple model and then plug this standard deviation measure over well this previous formula here over here for example and this is the risk matrix method this I garch very convenient I got it. update, update the list event, something like that. Therefore, log plus P T of log P of position satisfies the difference equation of A T where A T is so sigma T epsilon T and I got you one one process without drift. The value of alpha is open in the interval 90% to the one with the typical value is 0 0.94. Here alpha yeah, this weighted average. So give ninety four percent of the weight with the present estimate and risk innovation, it gives a six percent of weight. Example two uh, demonstrate if we demonstrate with IBM stock price in the data, yeah, which is yeah. Well this is yeah in the data set. Okay. TXT, this is IBM stock price. Yeah, IBM stock price. Good. Okay. The IBM stock price. We fit the I got you one more mode equation 11 to obtain the estimate of the parameter alpha and obtain alpha head is something like this. In addition, using this one is x is uh, using this one and then sigma is 0 0.77 we can have by applying i garch the sigma hat of next period 2516 is this one by applying this formula okay applying this formula consequently using risk matrix value leaves 95 percent this one 99% is this one, and expected shortfall is this one, expected shortfall is this one. Again, this is the loss, so we put minus over here. Therefore, therefore, value at least over million dollar is something like this, okay? Something like this, and then value at least is this one, this one. Finally, for 15 day holding period, we can simply multiply root 15 to this one. Okay. Well, so this one. So here we divide with one hundred because well, well, they are all percent. Well, for daily standard deviation, seventy one percent is too high, right? So it is the percentage value. So we divide one hundred, and then if we compare this one with the previous bar, uh formula for normal distribution okay we go to value at least normal distribution over here where is it for normal distribution yeah this one 
here uh, yeah it is not normal here basically we are calculating this way, which means that in risk matrix the drift term we expect the value this mu is in this uh, mu is assumed to be zero okay so we own z and sigma okay we are interested in that so in this in practical way well we don't know for the next for example next 15 days we don't know what would be the expected return it is hard to estimate and then for daily expected return is almost close to zero so we simply assume it is zero in risk management we are a bit conservative slightly conservative and then this risk metric has several advantages first it is very simple okay normal this we assume normal distribution and we assume square root of the time rule okay something like this simply multiple root and then multiple asset portfolio okay and then transparency but it also has some serious weakness assume model rejected by empirical data in empirical data well it is not normal and uh, it is not i garch the square root of the time rule fails either of the model assumption is rejected now for example consider multiple position for two asset value list the value is one because they are standard deviation we have this one the generalization of value list to a position consisting of m instrument is straightforward something like this one okay well rho ij is the cross correlation coefficient between the return of the i's and j's instrument and then value t is the value risk of i's instrument now a simple derivation for the prior formula for two assets basing setup okay two assets with low return r1t and r2t the portfolio consists of w1 and w2 amount invested in asset one asset two respectively on the risk matrix it is very conveniently on the risk matrix we have well this one well on the conditional distribution next period variance is well here beta is the weight between most risk estimate of the volatility and then variance and then risk change okay value risk for two assets are w1 value risk one and w2 value risk two respectively for instance, for fatal probability of 0 0.05, we have value for the two assets as this one and this one respectively. Let PT be the log return of the portfolio of the, this one, where W is this one and W is this one. The prior approach becomes equality for simple return. Remark, we have this one and this one and this and this one. On the risk matrix, we have PT, FT minus 1 on the right the portfolio. And then we have to estimate this portfolio variance given the most information. Then, well, this is the definition. And then we have to take into account the covariance or correlation between the two. So we have this additional term. And then failure risk for the portfolio is simply this one. For tail probability, of five we have this one okay therefore the square of the value risk for the portfolio with the tail probability of five percent is simply this one okay value risk square is this one and then this one and then this one and this one square and then multiplied by this one okay which is from this part this part and then well, we can extend this one, extend this one, then we have this one, and then we have, well, this one, this one, and then the about correlation part of this one, which is similar to this one, okay? Similar to this one, okay? So actually, this is hold. Therefore, le on the two asset, actually on the two asset, yeah, we proved this one, okay? We proved this one over here, okay? 
Remark, the result can be general to more than two assets. The formula continues to hold for expected shortfall provided that the mean return of the two assets are zero, which is assumed on the risk matrix. If the mean are not zero, then some adjustments are needed for the portfolio. Example 3. Consider a simple portfolio consisting of 40% in AA bond, AAA bond, and 60% of IBM stock. The market value of portfolio is $1 million. To measure the bond returns, we employ the daily lower than Bank of America, Merlin's U.S. Corporate AAA Total Return Index. And then during this period, the data of bonds are obtained from the Federal Reserve Bank at St. Louis. Figure 5 shows the low return of a bond index. Like stock return, bond return also gives the patterns of volatility, clustering, and weak stationarity. Okay, where is figure 5? Mm. Hmm. Figure 5 is. Yeah, here, here, here. Figure 5. It is the. Bond return. Clearly, there is volatility clustering. Okay. So, for bond return, now the volatility is, if we as I guard, it, the weight is now almost 96%. Okay. From which we have value risk is 95% is this one, and 99% is. A higher one, this like this. Recall from example 2.7 the that for the daily low return IBM stock is this one and this one. The sample correlation coefficient for the low return between IBM and AAA bond is negatively correlated because it's stock and bond, so 22%. Consequently, for the portfolio we have, well, it is we have we have 60, yeah, we have something like this one, yeah. Very convenient. Well, the superscript E and B in those equity and bond returns respectively. Thus, value rate for 95% is simply this. Okay, this is the portfolio weight, and then we this is the previous one, and then here the correlation is the important part. So the portfolio value risk is this one. It is decreased. Okay, and then between bond volatility and stock volatility. For this particular instance, we see that with tail probability of 5%, the value risk of portfolio less than the value risk of each component. More specifically, with 1 million investment, we have equity market only. It is like 11,000 or $12,000 and bond only it is $7,000 but portfolio is less than that, 640. The result is impact because value risk is a coherent risk measure under the normality assumption. The example demonstrates the value of diversification. Okay, so this is smaller than weighted average of this and this. Actually, less than any of this. Okay, so we can reduce the volatility by diversification or reduce risk okay so under this measure with five percent by investing one million dollars so by investing one million dollar in the portfolio in the portfolio only five percent with five percent we have the loss exceed this loss exceed this six thousand nine hundred and seventy eight dollar we exceed this one with 5% or loss is less than this one with 95% okay that's the value risk so this is less than that so we have diversification next we can do more sophisticated econometrics modeling use a time series model to predict the mean return cross-sectional okay or we can use the volatility model to predict the volatility, like Garch model or with T innovation. The approach considers modeling seriously, but it requires human intervention. Also, multiple period risk measure it becomes kind of tedious. Example 4. Consider again the daily low return IBM stock, model 1, or Gaussian Garch 1 model. The fitted value is something like this. Garch 1 model. The one step 
Allied prediction is this one. Or mean and parity. Consequently, we have value list and expected shock for something like this. Okay, for 99%, we have this one. This result implies that value risk 95% is this one, and then expected short for 95% is this value for the next trading money. Or we can use a CARC 11 model with standard student T innovation, then, well, for T distribution, the tail is thicker, and we have larger number than this one. Okay, clearly, this number is larger. So, we risk is larger. So with five percent, we are we can lose more than this. We can lose more than this. Okay, so this is larger than, hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, larger than this one. We have to compare this one. So when under five percent, with five percent, the loss extreme five percent loss is like this one, and on the T distribution with extreme five percent loss is more than twenty, twenty one, almost twenty two thousand dollar. Next, okay, we can use empirical quantile and the quantile regression. Most statistical software provide empirical quantile for given data set. Okay, so consider a daily log return of IBM stock. Or oh, this one. The empirical 90% quantile of a negative log return can be obtained as something like this one empirical quantile so we have historical data so we can check the 95 percent quantile okay something like this this is order static this is called order statistic of loss variable in this particular instance x is this one and this one now quantile regression what is quantile regression quantile regression is quite interesting one this is important one in economics so we use quanker and facet version of quantile regression so basically in quantile regression we are interested in estimating the conditional quantile of xq or of xt given information such as such as xq okay is inference we want as beta beta such that this r beta is mean where r q beta 0 mean means that beta 0 is obtained by argmax of we want to minimize beta that minimize this one well wq is defined as before so well again we can use we can consider the daily low return ibm stock okay and we can use quantile regression and then we can do the estimation okay this is tedious so we can skip this part but here okay what we focus on is that here actually we can use here where x is the loss and then well, as is leg one daily IBM stock volatility. So actually, we can use regression such that when we estimate risk, we can use other information like this one. VT is a big volatility index. So when we use quantile regression, quantile regression, we can estimate. We can include other information, okay, which possibly can predict the risk in the regression equation, okay. That's the advantage. And then extreme value theory. Okay, okay. Okay, so this part we can skip. Extreme value theory we can skip. Okay. Well, this is too technical. can skip skip yeah up to yeah credit risk okay this is something we need to run credit risk so some techniques for credit risk management long-term credit rating high to low yeah this is credit rating yeah 
SMP Moody Fitch. Well, high to so AAA is highest credit quality and D is lowest credit quality. Credit quality over time, we need transition. So this is a transition matrix. So triple A, okay. Wait, triple A remains triple A with 85% and double A can become, uh, double A can become triple A, upgrade triple A with 0.76% and triple A, double A, double A can downgrade to A at possibly 7.5%. For seven percent, something like that. So this is standard poor's February 1997 transition matrix between credits, and then credit matrix is J.P. Morgan and other funds. Okay, our package credit matrix is available, and then possibly you can use Altman's Z-score, which is made in U.S. So Altman's Z-score is 3.3 multiplied by EBIT earning before insurance tax over total asset and then 1 plus sales over total asset 0.6 market value of equity over book value of debt leverage plus 1.4 retained earning over total asset and then basically ROA and 1.2 working capital and total asset and then KMV corporation credit risk model is also popular and it is now merged with Moody Okay, they hire a lot of PhD, KMV, that is very good company. Credit matrix developed by JP Morgan and other sponsors in 1997. Simply put, credit matrix address the question, how much will one lose on his loan and loan portfolio next year for a given confidence level? From the assessment of the market risk, market risk, the current market value and its volatility of a financial position play an important role in value risk calculation. Application of value risk methodology to non travel loan incurs some immediate problem. Okay? The current market value of a loan is not directly observable because most loans are not traded and then no time series data available to estimate the volatility. So to overcome the difficulty, we make use of available data on borrower's credit rating or the probability that the rating will change over the next year, which is the rating transition method we saw and recover it on the default run. And the credit spread and yield in the bond market. For example, for example consider a 5-year five 5-year five fixed rate loan of 100 million made at six percent of annual interest and then borrow is rate triple b now the numerical number used in this example are from chapter six of reference book cited above and the rating migration one year transition problem for triple b rated bond is something like that okay with almost 87 percent it remains as triple b but with five percent over five percent, it can be downgraded to double B, but it can be upgraded to A with almost six percent. Now valuation, rating change is upgraded and downgraded will affect the required credit spread or premium on the loan's remaining cash flow and hence the implied market value of the loan. Okay? Now downgrade meaning credit spread premium rise which means it's cheaper and the present value of a loan should fall okay upgrade has the opposite effect now return to the example uh, after one year and the credit rate changing okay p okay because it is six percent for hundred dollar well we have what we have how many years five years so we have one two three four right so over five years we receive six dollar but at the end of five years we receive 106 dollar and then we have to discount it where this one is basically from risk free rate on zero coupon bond US Treasury bond so it is one year US Treasury bond rate and then 
two-year treasury bond rate, something like that. And this S1, S2, this part is important. This is called credit premium. We add some number, spread to the risk-free rate, and discount cash flow heavily. If the credit quality is low, this S, those things will be higher, of course. Where R1, IR risk-free rate on zero coupon US treasury bond expected to exit one year into the future and SI is annual credit spread on loan of a particular rating class of one year, two year, three year, and four year maturity. They are derived from observed spread in the corporate bond market over treasuries. One year for the zero cover plus credit spread are credit rating category. So here, yeah, this is credit rating category. Yeah. Suppose that during the first year, the borrower gets upgraded from BBB to A. Now the present value of the loan is now A is right. Year one is well, this percent. Okay, well. Upgraded to A, so we have this one. Yeah, this third line, third line. So yeah, this one, this one is all from these numbers. Okay, all from this number. Yeah, all from this number. So present value of loan is this one. Value of loan at the year one is this one. Okay. So rating value, we can calculate rating values such that. When it is upgraded triple A, it is highest. Okay, A we have this one. So by plugging each number over here, we can get it. for default we have this one. Okay, this is for default. We have information about default over here. Well, we don't have. Uh, wait, default is eighteen percent. We get eighteen percent over default. Okay. 0 0.18 okay we have a probability and on the default on the default we assume wait we uh, on the default we assume we got about half here yes now calculation of a value risk so well for each category we know this value and we know probability okay we know probability like this Therefore, we know probability for each case, we know probability so we can get value risk. Okay, so where year end rating is triple A, then it is probably 0 0.02 per value, two basis point, and this is loan value. And then if we multiply probability weighted value is about 0 0.02 dollar, difference of the value from the mean is this one. Mean is by multiplying, of course, this one, and then previous probability we can get mean, and then mean is this one. Probability weighted mean squared is this one, and then we can do the same thing for others, other, and PV now downgraded. Downgraded, we have negative value, negative value, and then probability. From the table, the mean value of loan is this one. Sum of the fourth column, yeah. Sum of the fourth column is yeah probability weight value. The variance value is this one. Sum of the rest column. Consequently, the standard deviation is like three percent. For normal, if we assume normal distribution of the loan value, then five percent var is this one. So we have a probability of with five percent we can lose more than this amount with one percent we can lose more than this amount if we use actual distribution actual this actually we have a higher number okay higher number but if actual distribution is use this one okay for actual distribution this actual distribution we can actual distribution from this one right for for each value, for each value, we know the probability. So from the probability, yeah, here. So probability value, okay, if we add all, then all sum to one. So with five, okay, so with one, 6.77%, then this is this one. So $5, 
yeah so yeah we are adding this or this is the yeah and then with 1.47 percent value risk one point so it is the yeah to make it uh to make it 1.47 but we have to add those three we have to add those three and then add three so we have a 98 dollar 98.1 so it is from the mean from the this one where well, from the mean we have about what we have about nine dollar okay so it is actually one percent of our one percent where is one percent well one percent bar is yeah so well the number is should be between the these two okay this 15 and this so we have to do some weighted average and then possibly we get this number one person number 9296 is obtained by interpolation okay 1.47 percent 1.47 percent if we add these three so then 1.47 percent of 98.1 about this one and if we add these two value is this one so by weighted averaging this and this this and this then we have ninety two dollar ninety two dollar okay so one percent is between this two and this so by finding location we can calculate the location of this one weighted average so we have this one weighted average is this dollar so from the mean to lose is this one okay so with one percent chance we can lose more than 14.8 dollar lastly we want to do i want to do some uh quantile regression demonstrate quantile regression because this is important in risk management so well uh, uh generate sample python course to study quantile regression Okay, so let's copy this quantile data and then the code over here. Okay, first we import library. In Python, in the stats model, we have quantile regression module like this one okay and the data set so example one synthetic data okay for synthetic data we give seed for replication and x mp line space 1 to 12 okay and y is 2 plus 0 0.5 with x this line this number okay i can show this one so cut let's cut cut and then let's see x then x looks like this one okay it's path line between 0 and 10 it divides this one into 200 okay well um how about 11 does it make no no not uh, 
Okay, so let's stick to 10. So between 0 and 10, it divides into 200. And then y is 2 constant and 0.5x, and we add some random number. Random number such that mean is 0. And then, yeah, y is normal 200 sample. 200 sample, and then variance is it increase variance increases with x okay so yeah variance increases with, with x so when x increases y increases we have higher and higher volatility higher, higher variance okay so this one second data frame okay we collect we collect the data from x and x now fit the quantile is all different quantile. So for this uh, y values, y value, okay. And then well 5%, 25%, and then and this one. So actually we can cut and then Followed has no attribute. Hmm. This does not work. Okay. Copy and so there is error. Okay, let's copy and then delete, 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 and then. Let's run code again. Hmm. Again, there is error. Ah, this is a bit annoying. Okay. Uh, actually, this uh, I'm not so happy with the code. So let's use the chat GPT possibly. Let's use the chat GPT. I want to study quantile regression. Generate sample Python code. Okay. How about let's see whether chat GPT is better. HPT and then let's run the code now okay ChatGPT works fine so let's take a look at this uh, sample code line by line okay quantile regression so the uh, graph is that well it is the well in the regression regression so this x and y in the regression, basically, we fit the regression with the, actually, yeah, I have great idea, so, nice. I want to compare the results with ORS, Ordinary Risk Regression. 
we can extend the code Okay, let's see. So it should be better. So quantile ORS. Well, so well this ORS uh, quantile is almost overlap, okay? So, ORS is dot line, so given X and Y, we fit the data with the line, with dot line ORS, and then almost identical one, this the yellow, this orange line, this is basically quantile 0 0.5. Quantile 0 0.5 it is median, right? It is median. And now, we have this uh, green one, quantile uh, 0 0.9, 95, almost 9, top, so it is top 10% and it is bottom 10%. So we estimate the estimate top 10%, bottom 10% line, something like this. Okay, so depending on x, we can check the risk. Okay, for example, when x is 0 0.8, if we are interested with bottom 10% loss, with 10% chance, we are likely to have this bottom line. Okay, this bottom point, when x is 0 0.8, we have this bottom line of loss with 10%. With 10% chance, with this one. With 90% of chance, we loss is, could be less than this high value. Okay, so quantile regression convenient by showing that by with x changing, when x changing, we can see how risk change, how risk change, especially the bottom line. Bottom, yeah, bottom the 10%, which is, yeah, bottom 10% line. Okay, so, where well, this is quantile regression result. Okay, uh, this is quantile regression result. Quantile regression result is that the intercept and x coefficient, okay, this is 0 0.1, Coefficient and this is the 10% line, 0 0.1. So, yeah, this is a bottom line. So, this is constant. And then for 0 0.5, 0 0.5, we have intercept is high and slope is a little bit low. And for 0 0.9 regression, uh, quantile regression, now we have a highest intercept, which is point about here intercept and then slope is well slope is slightly higher and then if ORS regression ORS regression and then this one is basically very similar to the previous one okay so if we take a look at line by line we import required library and we generate random sample data and then n is 100 sample data and then here we our random model 2 plus 3 x and np random something like this one okay random normal this is 100 okay and then create a data set something like this and we are interested quantile of 0 0.1 0 0.5 and 9 we can actually add 0 0.95 to 5 and possibly point 0.75 over here it is also possible okay also possible and then quantile models currently empty and quantile pretty empty we fill models and then with this one and then now we run quantile model, model is from smf smf is this one a uh, stat model from formula formula okay so module we call the module and then we do quantile regression and we fit y with x with the data data simulated and then when we fit we quantile is 1% 25% 50% 75% and then 90% and 
and then quantile model append or says to this one we append model result and then quantile prediction append model we add prediction okay and then now also we run ORS regression and the ORS model is we fit okay with ORS and then we prediction ORS model prediction data and then plot the result scatter plot data x data y we use scatter plot so yes we have scatter plot of data well we have yeah 25 and 95 percent uh, scatter plot and then Where was it? Yeah, plot the scatter plot. Okay, scatter plot and x value is mean max. And then we plot first, we enumerate quantile. So quantile is, well, from the model. Okay, we save the model here. We call the model one by one. And then check it intercept and then is parameter coefficient and x value and then plot those one uh, plot those one and plot ORS regression line as well ORS model parameters and ORS parameters and x and then this y value and we line style is this one okay here we don't have line style because we want to use default and then x label x y label y and we put legend and then display also summary okay so we have this result so again depending on x we can check what is the level of risk okay the bottom one that's the level of risk uh, 